Welcome back to the season predictor. We've done 20th to 13th. We're now doing 12th to 6th. Often this is where people start to get quite angry because one of those top teams obviously has to two of them. drift down there. Yeah, two, two of them, Flav. Yeah, this Lovely stuff. little tease there. Well done. <laughs> Ooh. That is good. Uh, right, in the last video, if you watched it, there was a passionate plea by me to say that Bournemouth are going to do well, who I've got down as finishing ninth this season. If you want to check out that passionate speech, then you check out the other video. You were saying that Bournemouth are going to have a, a nightmare of a season. But I've got them in 14th. I'm not saying this is relegation. Bad, yeah, that is true. Um, the other team was uh, Burnley who were knocking about down there. Um, my position, for position 12, I'm going to go for, for, Burn, um, for Burnley again. I was saying that Burnley should have been 13th in the last video, but it wasn't that. I got my 11th. Who's your vote? Bournemouth, Bournemouth I've got Burnley 11th, but Bournemouth should be 12th, I think, in this. Okay. I've, uh, got, I've got Leicester. In 12th? Yes. Mm. Okay. Me too. Really? Leicester, yeah. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. Why? Well, I think... Mares, Mares leaving. They haven't replaced him properly. Too much pressure this season is going to be on Vardy's shoulders. I think you know they've got quality up front in Vardy. They've got quality in the goalkeeper. You know Schmeichel. If but he stays. If he stays. I mean, if he stays. You know, Maguire. Is he going to stay? I just, I just feel like they're not going to have such, uh, such a good ride basically that they've had over oh, the last couple I, of years. Can I just add a, a caveat as well as that? Is that P uh, Puel is. Uh, and a completely uninspiring manager. He had a great start at Leicester, five wins in his first eight, dreaming of Europa League once again. Uh, and then since then, <laughs> well, then well it's just them having a party. Yeah, yeah. That's right. how they have a party, like James Ruddy. And, they, they, <laughs> they had, um, uh, and then after that, they won three games in 14 and just became nothing, making up the numbers. And Puel does not, it does not inspire confidence at all. And the and Leicester owners Mahrez, don't mess about, do they? No. Like, I mean, he, 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 he'll be up there. It's, sat right. uh, for me, it's Mark Hughes or him right. to first to go. And the problem is, Mahrez was so important to him. Mahrez and Vardy, 57% 50, of their goals came from them too. Vardy and Mahrez had a great relationship. Now, you know, one half of that partnership's gone. Mm -hmm. What will Vardy be able to do without his uh, partner in crime? I think Mahrez is a big loss. I've got, I've got Leicester um, a little bit higher than that, but I, I don't think... I mean, a lot of people saying that they're going to finish seventh or eighth. I don't see them up there at all. But I've got them in tenth. Yeah, I think people got a bit too excited with Maguire as well. Everything I've read, they go, they've no, got no, Maguire. No, so no, 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 <laughs> no. Maguire was their player of the year last year. So it wasn't. this isn't on the back of a World Cup. He was excellent last season. There was the, both the previews that but I did one, for World Cup against United. But one centre-back's not going to... They signed Johnny Evans as well. Uh, Johnny Evans is a good sign. Yeah, fair enough. He's an okay sign. But I don't, I don't think that's going to... That's not going to catapult you into yeah. seventh or eighth. It's going to keep, it's it's gonna keep you in yeah. mid-table <laughs> security, isn't it? <laughs> Evans and Maguire, you know, if they keep hold of them, they, they're going to they're going to keep you sort of in that safe zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. They're not going to set the world on fire. They're not going to get relegated. They're just in that kind of. So I mean, you two vote for Leicester. Yeah, and we haven't. Mm. But two, uh, you know, simple masses. They seem to keep up with me. Two <laughs> is enough. <laughs> <laughs> so Leicester. <laughs> Finishing. Wait, I'm confused. Uh, Le Leicester, yeah. So two is enough. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Leicester finishing twelfth. Mm. Bournemouth still hanging in there. <laughs> so Burnley. Mm. Um, who are you going for? Bournemouth. In right. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I'm going West Ham. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Here's your spanner. Off yeah. you go. Well, I just think. Um, I, I think no way. Yeah. I, th I think a lot of people are getting a bit over overexcited about West Ham's forthcoming season. Okay. I think. In Anatovic, yes, good player, you know, Hernandez, but... Yarmolenko, Wiltshire. <laughs> Wiltshire, see, I think everyone is pinning their hopes on Wiltshire, right? Lanzini is going to be injured as usual. Yeah. So everything, you know, all their creative, <laughs> you know, zeal has got to come through Wiltshire. No. A player who, as Anderson? much as I like Wiltshire, he's so bloody injury prone that, that you can't rest your hopes on him. And I think it, it because of that, I'm not sure they are you're mid-table. Mid yeah, I don't think they're going to rest their hopes <laughs> I think they're quite Philippe Anderson, Yarmolenko. Yeah, these are... Yeah. And, do you know what? Perez, I think, from Arsenal. Look Pellegrini like was done dirty by Manchester City. This is a good manager. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think he's, he's finishing bottom half of the table. Yeah, Tenth. I, tenth. I, I've got them it's eight. mid-table. I've got them eight. I've got them eight. He's done a Crystal Palace all out there. Yeah, he's, I think gone, he's had a nightmare. He's gone early. Um, he's, he's gone, gone early. early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's gone early. You just, just, uh, we sit in the <laughs> office upstairs. Just less. Just for a little bit. Just <laughs> <laughs> a couple of minutes. Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Right, right, Bournemouth. Bournemouth. Just to shut him up. <laughs> Bournemouth. <laughs> Finishing. I had them ninth, but no. Bournemouth. Fair enough. Maybe I've gone too far. Right, then surely Burnley. No, Wolves. What? <laughs> I got Burnley 11th. I got he's Burnley 9th. I got Burnley 9th. 
Can we agree to Burnley finishing? So right, right, let's go. Okay, maybe the, the next argument is it Wolves or or Burnley? Right, I, I think, think what's happened is, below there. as we both said, this, this is this is a pivotal sort of pair of teams. People are going, Europa League's a nightmare. Burnley are finished because of it, but they're still a resilient team with a great manager uh, and a very good Premier League team. I think if they'd have had a decent goal scorer, they'd have got above Arsenal last season. They was very close at a couple of points. Uh, I know it ended up fairly, <laughs> fairly wide towards Let's the end of it. Let's know your thoughts in the comments below. So I think people are massively overemphasizing the impact that George Mendes is going to have at Wolves and the Europa League is going to have at Burnley. And I think those two teams are going to be very, very close. I've mm. got Wolves coming ninth and Burnley 11th. Um, I think Wolves are going to have a great season for a newly promoted yeah. side, but mm. I think if you're thinking they're going to be 6th, 7th, 8th, which I've seen a lot of people suggesting, I think that's probably a little bit ambitious. I, I had them in 11th. I think the one mistake that I feel like they've made, and this player you guys might not know too much about, Barry Douglas, their left back last season, he's gone to Leeds, and I don't know why they've let him go, because I think he had 14 assists from left back last season. Like cracking left back or left wing back. We could have done with let him go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um. and I just think they're going to lose a lot there. But they have brought in. Patricio's an amazing buy. Matinho, I guess we'll see. But I'm excited by him. 31 as well. years old, bags of experience, yeah. still got it. And yeah. he played in the World Cup. Yeah. That he, is a great looked, signing for five million. What is going on, they by the way? <laughs> yeah. they Spurs have not signed a player. <laughs> they stay he would have been fine. Cristiano Ronaldo's coming in about 18 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. George Mendes is a um, little experiment. So yeah. this, does this come down to a vote? Should we do a vote, Wolves or Burnley? Okay, I, I vote Wolves. To finish okay, and, and, and Burnley. Yeah, and just, just quickly, the reason why is they they very exciting, very attacking, got excellent technical players and they will do well, but defensively some issues around set pieces, conceded 14 in the championship last season. So, uh, you know, he's in the Premier League, set pieces are very important. I think they might struggle there, but respectable uh, uh, to have a place for Wolves. Okay. Um, I think Wolves are finishing above Burnley, I, I, as yeah. I've said throughout. <laughs> I think Burnley are going to be down. So, there. It, it was, what's the vote? What's the vote? Wolves, so, so I'm Wolves or Wolves. Burnley? Who's saying Wolves are going to finish uh, below Burnley? Oh, I say Wolves. I've got Wolves one place above Burnley. <laughs> I've got, above I've got Wolves nine, Burnley eleven. So Burnley are the lowest. All right, for me. Burnley then. Burnley, fine, get rid of him. Yeah, Burnley. Tenth eight bad if, tenth, if yeah. they manage tenth with Europa League, they've done really well. They should be really happy. So yeah, the next place up is Wolves, right? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so <laughs> I got Leicester there, to be honest. I've got, do you know, I've got, no, no, I've got, you've got Leicester in 10th, I've got Leicester in 10th. But I've lost other people in other, other positions. Sure, I've you've got, got Leicester in 10th. <laughs> you've got them in 12th, so you need to put them in there soon anyway. Well, Le Leicester have gone, aren't they, so? Have they already gone? Yeah. No, they've gone. Yeah, Leicester oh, yeah. in 12th, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah they've gone. So now we're down to, to 8th. So yeah, it's Wolves then, yeah. And so there's a few teams here. So we've got Everton, we've got West Ham, Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, maybe, down there? No. Let's see, look, anyone is up for grabs. Come on, it's not even an argument. West Ham. You're going West Ham? I've got West Ham finishing above Everton this season. Okay. Now, Jack, I know how you your yeah. feelings on West Ham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot <laughs> rests on the the, the centre backs. Um, I think James Collins has has been released, which is slightly strange. But uh, they brought in a guy Diop, who's a young guy, and Balbuena from Corinthians. Bal Balbuena, it's a big jump. He's a massive gamble, but it, well, he's not a gamble, but it's it kind of will he be good enough? Yeah. Three point five million, it's not a big problem. You can do that. Diop is a more. Uh, there's more likely that he will be a good player because he's uh, yeah, he's played seventy eight games to Toulouse. He captained he's kid, them. Well. He's in and around that front French team. He's highly rated. I just think sometimes that people see players like called Diop and they just. D dismiss them because they're kind of this random French African player and they're not going to be good enough and, and, and I genuinely think that's an issue he's, <laughs> right. he's, he's, he's I, I think he is going to be an excellent player for West Ham if, I'm, if I was a West Ham fan I'd be excited about him the signings of Wiltshire I know you just mentioned it but he did play 38 games last year so the injury could be behind him although he's made a crisp so we don't know <laughs> and uh, and then Yarmolenko you know struggled with Dortmund but in Kiev was men. He's, he was, you know, people were, everybody, Liverpool were tracking him for ages. Maybe he isn't good enough, but West Ham, I think, is a good signing. Um, I just think I if you concentrate on eight. the players going forward, they've got a really exciting team there, even without Lanzini. Yeah. I think uh, Kiyate's gone to Palace, so they might have lost a bit of Andy physicality. Yeah. So maybe. he's an option for a you know, afternoon, <laughs> one, one time at the season. At <laughs> yeah, some stage, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I know Carroll's had a great season last year. I think Carroll's no, still, 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 still injured, isn't he? Yeah, but he's just, yeah, he gets yeah. injured. I mean, he'll give you some yeah. No matter what point you're watching this video, he's still injured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Evergreen, nice. Um, I, so let's talk about Everton then, because it's, yeah. is it between those two or is there, are you going to chuck Arsenal in the mix? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm putting Arsenal seventh. You're putting Arsenal seventh. Okay, we'll get, let's get to that. So, Everton. Spent a lot of money last season. 
Were all of those players just bad, or was it the management, or was Both, it the Europa it? League? You've, as well? got, you've got Europa League. You've got uh, settling into a new team. You've got from what I've heard, Kuman's a bellend. Um, poor, so really poor recruitment. Spent a lot of money in not. Well, yeah, and so Steve Walsh, who was a god the year before, after doing everything with Leicester City, mm. got sacked. So he's gone. So they've brought in a. They've changed that up, and Marcus Silva's come in. I think. For for your long term desires as an Everton fan, that's that's the kind of manager you want instead of Sam Allardyce. But yeah, he's got yeah. a lot of work to do. He, he's mm. done a lot, but he comes with a good reputation, and it's probably well well founded. I think there's issues with with what you saw of him previously. I think there's holes, but I think he sets a team up to play football really well. And I think he's a really astute appointment for Everton. I just think that they lack key areas like I still think that they need they, I mean they're not going to replace Lukaku but they haven't even tried to replace an out and out mm. striker like that so they've got Ch- <laughs> uh, Senk or Chenk what is it Tosan um, 27 million uh, Richardson. I don't think he played through the middle will no, he no probably on the left so it's probably going to be Tosan yeah. but the, the players around him Lookman had a really good time at Leipzig. Fia yeah, Wolcott. He, you know, no, he scored there. a few goals at the back end of the last season. Got, I think he can score goals for them. because The reason where I think he'll do well mm. is because of the players around him. I think that, that on paper, that Everton squad is, is really good. Yeah. I think, you know, you've got Pickford, who's going to be full of confidence after a good mm. World Cup. You've got the new signing for Charleston. You've got Theo Walcott, who's, you know, eventually he's, in a, he's in a side where he's going to get picked every week. And I think he's the sort of player that you know, needs to build Davis on momentum. Well, I've got a lot of time. Tom Davis is a quality player. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the way Rose is. I think there's just a big gap between Chelsea, Arsenal and then them. I think they, they, they lack someone that's like you know, a real... If they still had Lukaku, then they might have had that. So someone that you go, oh, he could be world-class in. Mm. Rich Allison might be that guy, but I think aside from that, I think they're a bit short on oh, genuine I, I top do, draw. Yeah, in one. terms of their playing stuff, they have the weakest squad out of the top seven, but they have an incredible manager in Marco Silva, in my opinion. Okay. And I've been banging this that might be the time. difference. That might be the difference for them to get over uh, yeah. a Chelsea or an Arsenal with European football. The, 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 but know. isn't Pellegrini a great manager as well? He is, but um, he's had a lot of success uh, at uh, good clubs with a lot of money. You know, Malaga, they were huge amounts of money were coming to that club when he won the league. Uh, Man City, City, you could say the same. It's a bigger challenge at Man, 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 West Ham. But at the two, if I, who would who would have been given money? But you need tons of money to work West Ham great. Uh, I think the, <laughs> I think out of the two, if I was choosing a manager for my club, I'd rather the young kind okay. of you know. West Ham got a horrible, mm. horrible start to the season in terms of their fixtures as well, like pretty and much everyone. Are they, they're one result from a meltdown again, you know. Yeah, this, yeah. Okay, so uh, well, let's have a vote out of those two then. I, I had West Ham finishing higher than Everton this season, but I wonder who Everton is still going to bring in as well. It's the back four that's a bit creaky for me, but mm. if they can mm. bring in a, another centre-back... I've got, got West Ham, mate. I've got West Ham, mate. I've got... Oh, you had West Ham. You had West Ham. I've got Wolves, eight. <laughs> Oh, wow. Says, yeah. right. We've got West Ham. So, so um, West Ham 11th. are 11. So it's, it's West Ham then. Do, do the maths again. So that's two. It's, two it's for weird. West Ham, which of course Means. is enough. <laughs> West Ham. <laughs> this could be your eight. catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Three years of it. But it's two is enough into every strand. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, can there be any debate on... Look, things happen. Every season things happen. Yeah. yeah. Everton or... Also, can anyone... Is anyone... Else, right. Is Ever, are Everton going to finish them? Yes. No. I think so. I think you're looking at a, a proper meltdown from Arsenal, which there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of positivity. And I kind of saw this after Moyes arrived at United. You're like, he's a young guy. He's got a lot of stuff behind him. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> then you sign, I'm going to say, pretty ordinary signings from Arsenal. Yeah. I don't think any of them... Aubameyang aside, because I know people think they signed him this summer, but they clearly didn't. He's been yeah, there a while. Yeah, they love to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but if you add Aubameyang to it, then it's a great summer. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't but, matter. But he came at Christmas, make, mate, so yeah, don't worry about it. doesn't make any sense. Aubameyang's a hell of a signing, and he might on his own be enough to carry this team, because he's going to need to, because yeah. I think the supporting cast and what they've signed doesn't threaten anybody in the top four. Uh, and the, the manager comes with a bit of a good reputation, but like I said, I, I, there's a definite... Moy's sort of correlation to this where you go we'll kick on from here but it might go worse mm. especially don't know the fingers that Wenger had in certain pies in certain departments and, and his massive transition yeah mm. I think I think the, I think they're in danger of I don't think they'll finish just like an ordinary season I think they'll exceed expectations or they'll, they'll bomb expectations oh, right. yeah. okay. I don't think they'll I don't think it'll just kind of sail along with nothing happening it's yeah. Arsenal as well and it's what it won't um, I, I think I do think that the 
it's slightly different because they've been geared up to to make this change and, and change the whole structure of the club for a long time. So instead of it being, oh, like, what do we do? I actually think they are have everything in place to go, to, to crack on. Mm. That said, I've got, because I think, I mean, ultimately we're talking about, does anyone think that Arsenal can finish in the top five? Nope. No. I mean, they could, but I don't think they will. See, I, the it's thing got, is, it's got when to rely you, on an underperforming big time from somebody above yeah. them rather than excellence yeah. from their part. Because well, if you compare, so if you compare the Arsenal team and the players they brought in with the squads of those other five, in my opinion, they are miles off still. Mm-hmm. Maybe the front three are good. Yeah, because well, we, sorry, go on, Jack, go on. I was just going to say, what they have in their favour is that, you know, out of, you know, their squad, they don't have as many people coming back from, you know, big trips at the World Cup, stuff like that. So potentially they've had more time, you know, in pre-season to sort of gel to Emery's new ideas and mm. new philosophies. So I think that might give them uh, a, a little bit of an edge, but yeah. I still I still don't see them, you know, Lacazette could, could be fresh four. and stuff like that, but I just can't see them cracking yeah, in. Their, their back four doesn't look great. You know, uh, holding um, Koscielny who's coming back from a bad injury, Achilles injury, is he going to be fully fit? You've got uh, Monreal, who's decent, is and uh, Bellerin, who their own players, their own fans are calling for him to be dropped for a 34-year-old player who barely played for Juventus. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, look, what we don't know about Arsenal is what we don't know. And they've bought players that we have no idea whether or not they're going to cut it in the Premier League. Torreira mm. looks OK. Socrates, <laughs> 50, 16 million for, for Dortmund. I mean, he's got to improve massively. Spell his surname. <laughs> uh, Say his um, surname. No. <laughs> I'm not going to. That's why everyone calls well them soccer. Uh, so look, it could be that they've, it, they've, they've, they've found some gems that other people didn't know about. The reality is they've probably gambled a little bit in the hope that these players will be up to it. If they are, they're going to have a great season. The likelihood is that some of them might be some of them. What's a great season for Arsenal fourth? They need, their, their fans are desperate to get back in the Champions League. That's how you start to build and, and it'll be three years without Champions League football, I think. Is that right? Yeah, no, I so final question on Arsenal then. Is it two years? Because we've got Arsenal and Everton sort of playing it out for this sixth and seventh. I've got Chelsea. Do Arsenal in the sixth need century. to. Oh, really? To throw a bit of a spanner in the works. Who have you got? Hang on. <laughs> Who have you got there? Fifth then? Arsenal. Oh, you put Arsenal fifth? And, and, did okay. anyone else say seventh? No, just you. Just me, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so for Arsenal. There's, there's so a, so you, uh, you're saying that they're going to move forward then? Uh, do you think that, although long term they might be better off for not having Wenger, I think most people would agree with that. Do you think they've got to go back before they can move Not necessarily, forward? no. I think, I think what's likely to happen is that I think Chelsea are on the verge of an absolute meltdown. <laughs> I think that's, I that's all the time, <coughs> to be honest, isn't it, with Chelsea. <laughs> I think losing Courtois is going to be a bad blow. Mm. I don't know how you're going to replace a keeper of that level. Rocky. I think he's, mm. he's top 10 in the world, easily. Oh, easily, um, yeah. So I think, that is, I think keepers are really underrated. And I think losing a keeper, uh, even if you don't want to be there, is going to be a, a nightmare for you. Um, I think adapting to the new system, I'm not sure you've got the players that can play how we've seen him play before. So I think I think that they, they're going to take their eye off the ball a little bit. And I don't think there'll be much in it, but I just think Arsenal will sneak in just a little bit. Even though I'm still saying that I think Arsenal are going to have a really tough season. Um, I think the expectation is that Chelsea are going to do better than that. So I think it'll be a bad season for Chelsea and a good season for Arsenal, even though I think there'll be a couple of points in it at the end of the season. OK. Well, where do you have them, Jim? I, I've got Arsenal sixth. I sixth. think mm. I think that Chelsea squad, when you look at it at the start of the season, um, often you're just looking at new signings. But actually, you've got to remember, David Luiz is a new signing. Um, Ruben loftus cheek is a new signing. Um, Keeping Jor- hold of like Jorginho. Hazard and Williams yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. That's, that's and crucial. And just the depth they've got in that's their crucial. squad is, is very, yeah. very I mean, I respect what Halston said about, about Chelsea. I don't think that it will happen. I think that six, seven for six is, is about Everton and Arsenal. No one here says Arsenal seventh, so I'm willing to concede and say Arsenal finish sixth. And I'll go with that. Finish, I think there's nothing in between seven. Arsenal and Chelsea. <laughs> and I think it relies on, again, the, the, the depth of where you go to in the Europa League. Yeah. Or I or think if you compare League. the two... The two squads, Chelsea have got the stronger, especially keeping hold of our key players, have got the stronger squad. And then comparing the two managers, I don't think there's many fans out there who've seen you know, glimpses of Napoli under Sarri and stuff like that who would select Emery to be their manager above Sarri. So I think those two, the squad Napoli and the manager the and his <laughs> tactics and his sort of philosophy of the way that football should be played, that, that he's trying to instil. I mean, it's going to be tricky what, transition the from Conte's way to this way. What point to is Europa League wins for under Emery, three and a bounce for Valencia, and the PSG wins, which don't really count. 
<laughs> the, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so, but the problem is you can't compare them. It's unfair because Sari's route through management is completely different to to Emery's. He he worked. He, he, he was a banker. He, he got injured. But was a banker. Uh, and then, then went into management in the non-league, lower league, and worked his way up to Empoli and then to uh, eventually Napoli. So he's had three years where he could have the possibility to turn an average Napoli side into a very mm. frightening one. But the, pushed the, you the extra far. side yeah. of last season. Yeah. And, and, so, and, and everybody then, looked It was so much watching. fun to watch. And was, so, and was so close, cons you know, considering the dominance that you know, Juve have had in Serie A over the years. <coughs> Became so close, you mm. know, to to pipping them, you and know, on more than one occasion. The personality of the players are the the right players to make that system. You might have, I think you might have, but I don't know that mm. you have. I can see it. I mean, if he's going to play that kind of four three three, you know, William down one side, Hazard on the other, we do need to sort out who the centre forward is going to be in this little uh, trio. But I it I don't see, you know, his philosophy of of you know attacking, you know, pressing. Being too much of an issue for the players that we already have, I think we need, you know, I agree. we need ho we need holes to be filled. We've got to sort out the centre forward spot, but yeah, I think if when you're comparing Arsenal and Chelsea, Chelsea are in a much stronger position at the start of the season. Okay, yeah. so we're going for Everton seventh, Arsenal sixth. Yeah, yep. I got yeah. Idea. I okay. Idea. So there you have it, Arsenal finishing sixth. The game we got it right last year. Will we get it right this year? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe to Ball Street. Click like if you enjoyed this video, uh, and we'll see you soon for uh, first to fifth.